This is Driving Solutions, exclusively on CBTNews.com. Hey everyone, Jim Fitzpatrick. Thanks so much for joining us on another edition of Driving Solutions here exclusively on CBT Automotive Network. Lotlinks recently announced its inaugural quarterly Vincensis report. Joining us now to tell us more about it and the findings of the report is Len Short, the executive chairman of Lotlinks. Thanks so much for joining us today. Hi, Jim. Happy summer. Yep. Thank Happy you so year. much. Thank it's you. it's good that it's here and uh, yeah. looking forward to a nice summer. Hope you are too. So tell us about the new Vincensis report. What does it serve to accomplish for dealers? Yeah. So I think, as you know, we've developed the authoritative VIN data set. We've been tracking yep. every car as it crosses every lot for 15 years. And not only what it is, but all the circumstances around it that will impact how it sells, you know, weather even. So we know the weather cars sat under, you know, you get a couple bad wow. rainy weekends, it's going to slow sales. Yeah. So, you know, this is, this is, you know, it's, as I say, it's the authoritative data set. You'd think the big guys would know this, but they actually buy pieces of it from us. You know, so we become the industry standard. There's a treasure trove of data there. Yeah. And we thought, you know, Vin census would be uh, a very, you know, a nice first move to start to expose some of that data to the market marketplace, give them some uh, insight as to what's going on in the market. Sure. So why do you think a report like Vincensis was needed in today's market? Why, why, uh, why did you develop the report? Yeah, as you, as you know, we, we suffered inventory shortages through COVID. Now we're back almost to pre COVID yeah. level, but it's a different market dynamic now. Mm -hmm. And so we thought it'd be very uh, valuable to dealers to understand how this market was affecting their brands mm -hmm. you know, around mm -hmm. days to sale, markdown pace, you know, a number of factors. And I always get this from dealers. They say, Len, the best thing you can do for me is show me how the other guys are doing. Yeah. Yeah. How I compare. Yeah. Right. So they're very interested in that competitive intelligence. And we thought this was a you know a valuable tool for them. Oh, without a doubt. Yeah. What do you think dealers will benefit from the most? You know, I think, you know, here the the big takeaway, frankly, is the rise in carryover risk. Right. So you're, you're an old retail. You understand, yep. you know, the whole game is how many turns can I put through my point? Yeah. And yeah. what gross yield can I get on my assets? Yep. Right. That's yep. really the car business at its simplest truth. Yeah. So when you carry over inventory, you know, which what we mean by that is, you know, if you sell within 30 days for new, great. Carryover is when they last, you know, they're on lot over 30 days. Yeah. Or when yeah. you sell within 45 on new, carryovers when they cross that line what we see is a 5x across the board a 5x increase um once a dealer carries over in uh inventory in terms of its days to sale for instance for the stuff they're selling fresh they, they'll move it in 12 15 days great gross it's an awesome business yeah. problem is you know you're carrying over 30 40 percent of it sure and all of a sudden that 12 days turns into 65 and uh, 70 yeah. days on average oh my god you know, and your grosses are slashed in half and so um the big insight here is you know the number i would i'd be paying a lot of attention to is the carryover rate and uh you know for each of the brands and when you you know that corresponds with the uh markdown pace mm -hmm. of the brands mm -hmm. and so i think dealers are gonna zero into that number not only in this report but in their business because it's really you can manage that carryover rate. That's the difference between a great profitable dealership and, you know, an average dealership. And nobody wants to be average. That's right. That's right. And you're exactly right. That definitely needs to be managed better. I know when I was uh, on the retail side, it wasn't something we looked at enough. Uh, yeah. We just looked at how many cars do we sell? What was the average gross profit? What did we do in the back end? And let the rest take care of itself. But to your point, if you can drill down further, and I know that you guys at Loud Links have been just masters at this really, and, and really identifying where are the opportunities for the largest gross profits and when they come in and a report like this would be very, very helpful. So tell us about the first report. What jumped out at you? What, what surprised you? Yeah, you know, hey, back to carryover risk, it's up 6%, you know, quarter over quarter and used. Wow. Right? That has a dramatic impact on dealer profitability. You go to carryover normally, you're now net into a negative gross. You're yeah. chasing a falling knife, you yep. know? Yep. And so that's up significantly. The other thing, 
that we harp on, and every dealer knows this, if a car is not getting shopped, it's not going to sell. Right. Right. I mean, you know, a, a, a car unseen is a car unsold. And over 50% of bins are getting no views. Mm. And that is the key metric for dealers. When you start looking at carryover, what drives that is lack of shopping activity. Yeah. You know, and pricing. A lot of dealers are pricing, still pricing too high, too too long. And then they're overreacting on the other side. You right. Know, they got to right. balance that a little bit better. But <laughs> you know, that's really, um, you know, the, the, the key thing. And uh, so I, I think that was what jumped out at me is that rise in carryover risk and the corresponding lack of shopping activity against the long tail of inventory. Yeah, for sure. Can you talk about some of the individual brands and their inventory markdown areas of interest? Yeah, we're uh, you know, very fond, of course, of uh, Stellantis, but you know those dealers are having a, a, a tough time right now. There's a yeah. lot of inventory, yeah. and you know they're marking down and new. And this is, I think, dealers will find this interesting as they look into this, looking at every brand, what the the average number of markdowns and the average amount of uh, markdowns. So, you know, they lead, lead, you know Chrysler leads the pack with an average of six markdowns mm -hmm. before sale on new inventory, mm -hmm. and Dodge is right behind it with five. You know, and so dealers are having to respond in this market to, you know, with, you know, frequent and deep uh, discounting to move that inventory. Yeah. But as yeah. as we all know, discounting alone won't move a move a, a, no. a unit. Nope. Right. We just did a we released another study, which you guys would be interested in, you know, six, 76 percent of new car markdowns are followed by another markdown and nobody's viewed the car in between. Wow. It's like a tree falling in the woods, right? Wow. They, markdowns do not drive incremental demand. Yeah. You got to be priced right, but then you got to bring the demand in on the cars. So that's right. You know, I think that's what jumped out with me. Even Toyota, you know, is seeing an increase in, you know, markdowns in a stretch. So this is affecting everybody, different, different regions, different brands. As you know, you can go to lawlings.com and there's a, uh, a great amount of free information about how the individual brands are doing market by market. You can drill down to your yeah, trading it's area. Incredible. Incredible. See how you're doing. So, you know, what we're trying to do is, you know, arm dealers with competitive intelligence, right? You can't make smart strategic decisions unless you know the, you know, the battlefield, right? That's right. And that's what we're trying to service you. That's right. How can dealers take action on the data found in this report to help their business? Yeah, I think, you know, the thing that dealers as I say, they, they want to know how they're doing versus everybody else. So they're seeing the national averages here, mm -hmm. right? So they can say, all right, how am I doing in terms of my sales base and my uh, markdowns? They, they can engage with us, just go to our website. You can see how that varies by market because it's mm -hmm. not, you know, I got up markets and down markets, you know? Sure. Um, and, you know, so I think that's the most important thing. They, they want to benchmark their business. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, dealers are great operators. They know how to you know make their numbers. You know, the market gets in their way. Right. And sometimes, you know, they get what I what I get from dealers is, listen, the manufacturer comes in and beats me over the head with my market report. Right. It's last quarter's information. <laughs> you know, they beat the hell out of me. It's already happened. And then they walk <laughs> out and they don't they don't tell me what to do. Right. Right. How right. To fix it. They don't give me any tools on how to fix it. What we're trying to do is give dealers real-time information, right? So that they they know what's happening to them in the market, yeah. you know, and around them, you know, as it's happening, so they can take corrective action. Sure. And as sure. you get ahead of the curve, just like in everything, you get behind the curve, you've got a problem if you're always playing oh, catch. No so, question about it. So this is the tip of the iceberg, right? And and you know, we're sitting on this very valuable data set. We our our approach here is to you know make it available. You don't need to be a Lotlings customer. We want to get it out in front of dealers. The ones who understand the significance of this, yeah, basically have no choice but to engage with us. Right. right? So right. you know, right. uh, once they start looking at these things, now they're looking for a tool to counteract it, and that's what what we do. So. Yeah. And what I love about Lot Links is the fact that you're helping dealers of all sizes, whether they be you know whether they have a hundred stores in their chain or they have. Three, you know, it, it's this is the kind of information that today's progressive dealer needs at their fingertips, right? Yeah, our business is largely, you know, I mean, we, we work across the spectrum, of course, as you know. Sure. But you know, the the big savvy groups, you know, tend to be, you know, they they really get what we do. Sure. Part, frankly, is with the those independent operators that don't have all the resources. Right. Right. That's right. And you know, they are great. You know, those those stores are led by great car professionals, right? Sure. But they can use more data. 
this is what I'm hearing out in the marketplace. And, and I just came back from a market where I was meeting, you know, face to face with very, very large dealer groups, mm -hmm. you know, the management, all the GMs. And, you know, what they're all saying to me is, listen, remember when the Internet hit and some of us were, you know, wondering if this was going to last or whether it was going to I, I, I was there in those meetings. It was nobody's going to buy a car and uh, look at no, it on the... Yeah, you know? yeah, it's just and, a fad. And, yeah, and of course, you know, the ones who <laughs> got it, got it. Probably. That's right. The ones who dragged their heels, not so much. They've That's been right. playing catch-up ever since. What they feel, and, you know, and, and I'm listening, right? You know, I could go around telling them this. this. But there, I don't have to tell them. They feel like, listen, big data and machine learning yeah. is coming at us, yep. and it's going to be bigger than the internet. That's right. I hear that over and over. Yeah. And here's our chance, right, to to ride this wave. And you know, the issue is, you know, dealers are organizing their data. Everybody's building a CDP. But you know, Suzanne just ran a very broad based uh, uh, survey with dealers. Only twelve percent claim to be leveraging their data in their business. Oh my gosh, and what is the deal that, there? Yeah, you know, and, and listen, what I'm, they all know it. They know, listen, we uh, we got this, we know this is big, this is a game yeah. changer. The ones who get on this are gonna, you know, prosper. Sure. And they're looking for tools to, to actually activate their data and actually leverage it for their advantage. And that's what, you know, so I think as we go forward, just like everybody's become an internet expert, yeah. you know, from a skeptic to an expert, sure, you know, we're going to say the same thing. Dealers are going to be more and more focused on the data that drives yeah. their business. And don't you think, Len, that in, in large part, that's got a, a lot to do with the last three or four years being so robust for dealers that even if they, even, even a poorly run dealership was doing 3x what they did in 2019. But now all of a sudden that we're back to those 2019 and 2018 levels, they're going, uh-oh, we got to figure this thing out. And we got to figure it out quick to get some of that gross back, some of those sales back. I mean, you're seeing inventories now aging. I don't have to tell you, you wrote the book on it. But, uh, but, but don't you think that now they're a little bit more, uh, I shouldn't say a lot more, paying attention to this specific area to say, wait a second, we're sitting on all this data. How are we using it? I mean, to hear a number of 12%, is actually a crime in 2024. Yeah, we yeah they are all feeling we got to play smarter. You and I were together at NADA, and yeah. every dealer I spoke to had the same thing. You know, they were telling me we lost discipline. In yeah. COVID. Oh, 100. The owners, yeah. The owners were saying, "Listen, none of my guys have ever actually seen the real car business. That's you know, they've been good so long. <laughs> you know, like what am right, I going to do right. about this? You got to demo the yeah, car. Not, what is that saying, all about? Yeah, they're they're not saying, "Hey, oh, the car business is turning." The owners know it's just going back to normal. Right. Okay. This That's is just right. normal, right? right? The normal car business is that tough, competitive, you know, you need yeah. to be sharp and on it to succeed. That's right. And so they, you know, and, and they're looking, you know, for anything that's going to give them an advantage to come back. And they all feel it. Listen, we got to get back to the basics. We got to get, you know, we've got to find the tricks that's right. that are going to keep us, you know, um, you know, competitive and profitable in this, uh, in this business. Yeah. And, you know, that's kind of where we live. We talk to the dealers who get it, you know, and we offer it to everybody. Well, and uh, more I, and more, they're, they're, they're paying attention. Sure. I think what's, what's uh, certainly worth noting from our perspective here at CBT News, because we've been, you know, covering your company and working with your company for ever since it really got started, was you were always out there going data and machine learning. I mean, every single ad talked about that, you know, and now all of a sudden it's coming back to where dealers are going, oh, wait a minute, this AI thing is really, you know, is really the future of the industry. You must sit back and go, yeah, I've been ringing that bell now for the last hey, eight years. For a long, and, long time, I felt like Don Quixote, man, just you know, <laughs> preaching about this and nobody was listening. Right, you know? right. And you're going, I've been saying that the whole time, you know. Yeah. Do you yeah, not? You and I started about the same time, and you, you moved and you launched CBT just when I was yeah. there. I, yeah. By the way, I wish I was smart as you are because you grew, you exploded. <laughs> We've been well, attracted. We just moved steadily ahead. But well, you, I don't know, you know about that. But uh, but no, we. It, it's been a great relationship, and the whole time I'm going, this guy gets it. Uh, it's all about machine learning, and now all of a sudden, everybody's like, "Oh my gosh, can you believe what machine learning and AI is playing a role?" You must sit back and laugh and go, oh, just really? Yeah, it's just so. it's gratifying because yeah, there's so much that it can it can 
offer to a dealership. Sure. And it's very easy. And, and what I like most about this is it's not upsetting any of the norms. It's not sort of, you know, at odds with the fundamentals that we all know and understand yeah. about the car business. Sure. It's just executing at a machine level. Right. And so it gives dealers, if you you deploy machine decisioning and machine management, it frees up time of course. and a headspace to do That's what right. what the dealers do, which is sell the cars. That's right. That's right. And they have spent, you know, one of the bad things about the internet is it really dragged dealers down a rabbit hole and they spent way too much time trying to figure it out. That's right. You know, and it was a big distraction from the core car business. Yeah, you know? there's no so. question about it. And I would not want to be a in the car business today running a dealership and to be running against a store or competition that's got lot links in there. And I, I would I feel I would be at a huge disadvantage if that were yeah. the case. So, you know, yeah, you can't compete. We watch, you know, we, yeah. we activate these stores and they literally just pull away from the competition. They move, you know, they move up. It, it's just it, it's it's what we all know. Listen, if, if you're yeah. relentlessly disciplined, you'll do better. That's right. right? That's, and that's right. And that's what it does. It gives them that that discipline. That's right. That's right. Len Short, thank you so much for your insights today. We uh, very much appreciate it. And for all of you that are watching, you can check out Driving Solutions now exclusively here at CBT News and streaming on Roku and Apple TV. So thank you all for watching and thank you, Len, for joining us on the show. Good to see you, sir. You too. Thanks for watching Driving Solutions exclusively on CBTNews.com.